welcome to Hard Fire. I am your host, Joseph Dobrian, and I'll be with you for another half hour of discussions of current events from a libertarian perspective. Tonight, we are going to once again take on the issue of taxation. Should we be taxed? How should we be taxed? And um, with me tonight, once again, it's always a pleasure to welcome Brian Jones, formerly the front man for the rock group, the Rolling Stones, and now well known as a uh, consulting actuary and attorney. And uh, Adam Yomtov, the New York State Volunteer Director of Americans for Fair Taxation. Now, um, Adam, I'm going to start by uh, asking you to just remind our viewers, uh, some of whom have not seen us before, what is the fair tax and um, why are you for it? The fair tax is realized in House Resolution 25 and Senate Bill S-1025 is a sales tax. It's going to replace all personal and corporate income taxes. It's going to replace estate taxes, gift taxes, payroll taxes, alternative minimum tax, uh, if I didn't mention the capital gains taxes, uh, all to be replaced by the fair tax. As mentioned, a sales tax uh, at the um, for personal use at the retail level, only on new goods and services. So just like we have our current uh, local and state sales taxes, we would be leaving a federal sales tax on top of it. Simple, fair, transparent. We're going to keep it, those are three safe characteristics of a good tax system with the sole guiding principle uh, to collect taxes in the most simple, fair, transparent manner as possible. Okay, well, I will grant you uh, simple and transparent, but uh, Brian, would you say it's fair as well? Uh, I would say it's certainly not fair as Adam just presented it, but he forgot to say one very good thing on his side of the argument, which is that combined with this is a s second, almost independent proposal for a flat demographic grant. So the the fair tax is not progressive. In fact, it's the very opposite of progressive. But the introduction of that flat demographic grant, almost like the negative income tax that Milton Friedman used to uh, recommend, that makes it reasonably progressive. So I, I don't have a single reaction to what Adam says. I have two. The first reaction is that the flat demographic grant, uh, the Milton Friedman idea, I like very much. The idea that a sales tax, particularly a sales tax only on new goods, is the way to go does not appeal to me because it's supposed to get rid of complexity. And inevitably it won't. We're going to have to exempt food probably or have a lower rate on food. We're not going to exempt any of those things. That's the point of it is any tax system can become complicated. When our income tax system first well, started. Well, Adam, if, it's yeah. not, if food isn't going to be exempted, I can just hear some bleeding heart liberals screaming, but our children, you mean you're going to tax milk for our children? I mean, every, those items are currently taxed at the <coughs> local and state level. What we're talking. Actually, food isn't. Food is. You go into the supermarket and you purchase a deli sandwich. Yeah, it's going deli to items are taxed. Exactly. Typically exactly. not. Exactly. Winston Churchill said one time that there is no finer investment for any society than pumping milk into babies. Uh, and, yeah. and I agree with him. I, I don't think he was a bleeding heart liberal Yes, well, any, uh, any more than Milton Friedman. I would, I would counter to that that when uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson said that patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel, he completely overlooked the immense possibilities of the phrase, our children. Uh, but uh, you were talking, to get back to the subject at hand, about um, the flat tax, or excuse me, the um, fair tax being, in your opinion, not progressive. Well, what's so great about a tax being progressive? I don't think taxation should be progressive. I, I, I think it's a very good idea that people who can afford it pay a little more tax. And they do people, under the fair tax, by the way. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. But uh, if we were to go to the fair tax and the, and the sales tax idea, uh, I would certainly think that uh, luxury items should be taxed at a higher rate. And when you do all of those things, you wonder about food. You wonder about the, the luxury items, whether the rates should be different. 
you wonder about the distinction between new goods and old goods and what's recycled and what's really new. No, I'm curious, curious about the, same the old kind goods, of, new goods. Uh, well, distinction. fantastic. Um, All that time and well, energy that me, you're talking about. Well, let just, me ask you, though, yeah. about old goods and new goods. Does that mean that if I go out and buy antique furniture, that would not be taxed, but if I went out and bought brand new factory made furniture, that would be taxed? If it's for personal use uh, at the retail level, new goods and services will be taxed. Correct. Okay. But so, um, something I buy from an antique store would not be taxed. Correct. Okay. I, I, they're, correct. Correct. What, what, what would you say to Brian's <coughs> idea about <coughs> what, a luxury what I, tax? What, what, I, what I say to you is this. See, you're coming from the perspective of, of, of creating this social change. You want to do that, do it in a spending program. Uh, the rich are going to purchase a yacht. You don't need to make it, instead of 23% is advocated by the fair tax, to make it 30%. Okay, we're going to keep it simple why, why not? because it's because it's simple idea. because then you have somebody getting in line who is of the medium yacht manufacturer saying, well, we're not really a yacht. We're kind of this. And you start causing all of this kind of activity to avoid taxation. Let's create an environment that is fair. Let's keep it as transparent. Uh, no, make it as transparent as possible. OK, and let's make it simple and fair. You walk in whether you're rich or poor, you buy this great hard fire new mug here, and you're going to pay a sales tax on it that is the same uh, whether you purchase, I guess, a crystal in Tiffany's. And there should be no distinction between it. Once again, you want to help somebody do it in a spending program. Don't add complexity to the tax collecting system. Make it simple. Make it fair. Tax everything at the same rate, because what are you doing? You're discriminating, and that's what our current tax code does. It mm -hmm. discriminates. It says there's a particular right. behavior <coughs> or there, there's a particular sure. activity, well, Brian, and then you get in line, and then you have bread manufacturers yeah, exactly. saying, "Brian, would it satisfy you to just be told that uh, after all, rich people buy more stuff than poor people, and therefore they are going to be um, taxed not at a higher rate, but they will pay more tax?" Not, Correct. Not, not really. <coughs> in fact, in all these discussions of fair tax and flat tax and whatnot. I'd be inclined to say that at some point the argument about do we tax the rich a little more heavily and how do we do it is something that we can almost put aside. We can argue about the definition of rich. We can argue about the amount of extra taxation. But there are always going to be but, enough jealous bums out there who want the people richer than they are to be taxed. Yes, but I, 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 think, I think if we talk about the bulk of the people, the people who, for example, earn not more than the president earns, or not more than twice the president earns, then I think we can start thinking about how, how do you do that, how do you tax them efficiently? And the answer, it seems to me, if you have this flat demographic grant, the one thing in Adam's program that I, that I, that I really like, because it gets rid of welfare, it ensures it, it gets rid of the welfare trap, which mm -hmm. everybody is so familiar with. You have a flat, in, in, in the flat tax, you have a flat income tax rate. So if it's 20% or 25% or whatever, everybody keeps 80 cents or 75 cents on the dollar at whatever level of income they, they are okay. at. Okay, very good. And that, I think, works. Now, let me and, ask, oh, can, can I uh, say just one more thing? You can do that with, with, through withholding. You okay. can withhold on salaries, interest, Excellent. dividends, etc. I think we understand that, but uh, I'm lost. Adam, let me, I, don't, I don't understand well, Adam, let it. Me I'm ask sorry. You this. He's getting back to withholding on well, 17 different uh, Let's places. just cool it yeah. and uh, let me ask you a question. Um, your um, fair tax, how close is it to uh, being realized? Okay, let, let's talk about realities here. We have, I believe, uh, 65 co-sponsors, so including the sponsor that makes 66 congressmen uh, ha representatives who are on board with this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a total of five uh, senators who support this. Okay, uh, that's not a huge number, but are you getting grassroots support so as well? It, it was a lot Popular more when support? we when we sat down, I believe, uh, two years ago. The number of co-sponsors that we got on HR 25 within the first four months, okay, was like 50 signed on. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was more than we had gotten on previous yeah. bills in I two years, et cetera. So the point into is, the, into the country and taking it to the people, so to speak. Correct. I mean, if if we if we have actually a video here of the Republican presidential candidates debate in South Carolina, uh -huh. that maybe uh, we could look at.
Tonight we raise the flag for the fair tax. Tonight we plant our feet and say to every elected official, to our fellow citizens, to the national media across the parking lot, it's time. Fair tax is the is literally the single best idea for wealth creation and success that we have in the country. Fair tax now. You know, in, in World War II, Ford Motor Company made a bomber every 60 minutes. Chrysler made tens of thousands of tanks, and that industrial base has moved offshore largely because of the American tax system. The fair tax is going to reverse that. The Fair Tax Organization does not endorse candidates, but let me be very clear. I endorse you, and I endorse the Fair Tax because it's the best hope we have of finally changing the tax system in this country. The Fair Tax is and will be when it gets signed into law, the largest transfer of power from government to you in the history of this country, and it is about time. It's how very wrong it is for our government to tax us according to our income. Our founding fathers never intended for us to be taxed in this fashion. Get informed and do something as simple as pick up the facts about fair tax. If you want your freedom back, if you want your life back, and if you want control of this republic back, then you need to support the fair tax. Fair tax gives me a chance to be a true American, and that's why I'm here. The tax code is totally out of control, and we need the fair tax to simplify everything. This is what America needs. This is what America has to have. It'll be great when it happens. We're going to make it happen because it's real. They call it the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, what service do they provide us? We need to take charge of our life, and fair tax plan is definitely a good start. Educate yourself on the fair tax plan. It's only through education will the American people understand how fair tax will affect their lives in such a very positive way. It's time to stop it, don't you think? Read the book. The issue is taxes, uh, always important in these uh, caucuses and primaries. And the Iowa uh, Republican Party has said the most important economic reform Congress can, act, can enact to win the fight against poverty is the fair tax. For our viewers, I want to explain what the fair tax is. It would eliminate the in income tax, estate tax, payroll tax, and capital gains tax. It would eliminate all those and replace it with a 23% sales tax. That's the fair tax. Here's Mr. Yepsen with the question. Governor, this Governor Huckabee, this issue of tax policy, I, th I see it as a real fault line inside your party. Fair tax, national sales tax, a flat tax, or make adjustments to the existing tax system. Where do you come down on this question? I absolutely support the fair tax, and part of the reason is the current system is one that penalizes productivity. A recent poll showed that more Americans fear an audit of the IRS than they do getting mugged. And the reason is getting mugged isn't as painless as an audit from the IRS. <laughs> And the reality is, if we could have the fair tax, you take $10 trillion parked offshore, bring it home. You rebuild the Made in America brand. You free up people to earn money, to work. You don't penalize them for taking a second job. You don't penalize them for investing. You don't penalize them for savings. Today, our tax system doesn't need a tap of the hammer, a twist of the screwdriver. It needs a complete overhaul. And what the fair tax does, it ends the underground economy. No more right. illegals, let me, let me, if I may. No more illegals, no more gamblers, prostitutes, pimps, and dope dealers will be able to escape the tax code. It's Governor the Romney. single greatest thing comment? that will help, help this country <laughs> have a good survival. <laughs> Governor Romney, how do you come down on this question? It's good, but it's not that good. <laughs> uh, no, it's actually better than that, Ned. Yeah. It's even better than that. <laughs> uh, 
There are a lot of features that are very attractive about a fair tax. Getting rid of the IRS is something we'd all love, but the truth is we're going to have to pay taxes. We are the largest economy in the world. We've added, during the time Europe added 3 million jobs, we've added about 50 million jobs in this country. And so completely throwing out our tax system and, and coming up with an entirely new one is something we have to do very, very carefully. The President's Commission on Taxation, Tax Reform, looked at this and said, not a good idea. Some of the reasons... They didn't they, look at that. Uh, let me, hold they on, let me complete. That. Some of the reasons are the fair tax, for instance, charges a 23% tax plus state sales tax on a new home when you purchase a new home. But if you buy an old home, there's no tax. Think what that might do to the construction industry. We need to thoroughly take it apart before we make a change of that nature. That's why my view is get rid of the tax on savings and let middle-income people save their money tax-free. Mayor Giuliani, which one of the three options are you? National sales. Oh, oh, eliminate the death tax. Uh, that should be eliminated immediately. It makes no sense at all. We're, we're in 2010, the death tax is going to go to 0%. You, and then it's going to go to 55% in 2011. You do not want to be on a respirator in 2010. But go, go, I, Governor, I, I, excuse I me, go, Governor and, Huckabee. And then, and then I would, I would, I would, uh, I would say the most, the most sensible thing to do is to simplify the tax code, reduce taxes, keep taxes low. I don't think. I think the flat tax and the fair tax are both very intriguing. And if we were starting off at the very beginning with taxation, first argument I would make is let's not have any taxes. The second argument I'd make is the fair tax or the flat tax would probably be a better way to go. But you're not for the but fair the tax governor, now, correct? But the, it would be too complex to get there. And somebody would have to show me how we're going to make that transition. And also the thought that there wouldn't be an IRS with, with, the, with the fair tax. Well, who, who is going to administer the sales tax? And who's going to administer the people that are exempt from the sales tax? And who is going to administer what items might be exempt from the sales Maybe food would be exempt from a sales tax. Flat. Senator McCain, how do you come down on this question? I believe that we've got to simplify the tax code, but one of the first areas we've got to go after is the alternate minimum tax, which is going to eat into 20 million American families if we don't eliminate it, and very quickly. Look, when we found out that Congress could not close a single military base when we had a huge number of them, we appointed, we passed a law where we appointed a commission, and they said we would close so many bases, and Congress votes up or no, up or down. I would find Alan Greenspan, I'd say, give us your recommendations, we'll pass a law, and we will vote on Alan Greenspan and his commission's recommendations, yes or no, up or down. That's the way you're going to simplify the tax code, which now requires $140 billion of American families' income to prepare their tax return. Congressman Tancredo. The reason, the, reason why, the reason why we absolutely need to go to something like a fair tax, and I am a co-sponsor, and by the way, if you don't understand how it would work, I would suggest to you that you read Neil Bortz's book and John Linder's. It's a perfect uh, uh, explanation read, read of how it works. Read now, it. Now, now, here's, 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 well, then you should know how it works. We just and the fact is that. Um, but the most important reason, the most important reason to move from an income tax to something like a fair tax, to specifically a fair tax, is because an income tax is designed to manipulate behavior. Sure. It gives the government the power to manipulate your behavior. I reward you for the things I want you to do by giving you a tax cut. I penalize you for the things I don't want you to do by raising your taxes. Okay. That's too much power for the federal government. I it is always going to be over reaching power. I've got to move on. Senator Brownback, you get 30 seconds on this, and then we move on. I think we need to move towards an optional flat tax. I think we need to go to flat tax. And let me, let me say why here. We've got a problem with the current tax code, and we've tried to take it out, and every time you try to take it out, everybody comes to defend it that's got something in it. You can put an optional flat tax in the tax code and let people choose. And... It will create economic growth. That's why 16 countries have already gone to a flat tax. It creates growth. Growth is the key for us in this economy for us to get things moving Okay, forward. but you're against the fair tax. Well, I want to, I've got to move on now. Sorry, Governor. I've got to move on right now. All right. Well, um, I was struck really by the um, fact that the more the front runner type of candidates, uh, Romney, Giuliani, uh, they seem to not be too 
um, happy about the flat tax, whereas um, Governor Huckabee, who is somewhat of a dark horse, seems to be very much in favor of it. I mean the fair tax, not the flat tax. I well, yeah, let me, give me, let me get a little update. So as stated, 65, uh, 66 sponsors on H.R. 25. You got five sponsors on uh, the Senate bill. Presidential candidates include Democrat and Republican, Senator Mike Gravel, uh, Tom Tancredo, Mike Huckabee, Duncan Hunter, a couple of others. Um, as, as you saw before, the, the, the support was overwhelming in South Carolina. We had over 8,000 of our volunteers now, uh, there, which overwhelmed every other group that was walking on the streets promoting their idea, signs, etc. People from all over the nation uh, congregating down there in South Carolina. 8,000. We filled the stadium. There was uh, Sean Hannity was there speaking. Uh, John Linder spoke. I believe Neil Bortz was there. Herman Cain, just a big crew of people down there promoting, talking about the fair tax. And of course, I'd state the most important the fact that 8,000 of our supporters showed up, filled the stadium, and then funneled out into the streets of uh, South Carolina to, to overwhelm the streets and to show the support for the fair tax. Well, that really was something to see, too. And um, um, Brian, um, I uh, get the impression that uh, support for the fair tax comes pretty strictly from Republicans, aside from Senator Gravel, whom uh, Adam mentioned, are you hearing much support uh, of the fair tax from Democrats or people who call themselves liberals? I, d I, d I don't think so. I think the, uh, the the notion that this one tax can be a substitute for all the other things, such as the estate tax, the corporate tax, the payroll tax, just turns off most liberals because they think it's completely unrealistic. I, th I think unrealistic and it doesn't punish the rich enough. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make the rich pay their way in, I, in, a, I, in a fair way. I don't understand that because we're a capitalistic <coughs> society with democratic ideals. Uh, we value labor and we're a consumer, consumer driven society. So why not put a, a tax on that? I, I have n no problem uh, thinking that our uh, our capitalistic society, the amount uh, that's spent is going to be able to generate enough ta tax revenue. I mean, all you have to do is just take a tax rate and multiply it by what the GDP, and then you come up with uh, an amount. Well, Adam, I'm going to go yeah, you that... one better. I'm going to say that uh, even your fair tax isn't fair enough. I say that no one ought to be taxed without his own consent, and to do so is theft, no matter who does it and what they call it. Well, and, and that being stated, well, sure our founding is. fathers did not allow for a direct income tax. We had to uh, amend our Constitution with the 16th Amendment in order to allow a direct tax. Now, I mean, there's some bright minds today, uh, and there were some extremely bright minds back in the, the revolutionary days and especially when they were drafting the Constitution, Jefferson, uh, Adams, Hamilton, the list goes on. But okay. even the founding and fathers the, the were founding not opposed fathers. to taxation. Isn't not, that correct, it's, Brian? It's not that they were opposed to it, but so, what I'm saying is the manner in which they didn't want the government prying into the books, they, 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 they did not allow it. We had to amend the Constitution. And let me just, let me just go on that. Uh, I just got a little Brian, quote you're, here you're to the, talk about but it. In a I'm, moment. I'm, Brian, you're the historian here. Maybe you can tell <coughs> us why the income tax was uh, evolved and um, instituted in the first place. Well, the, the, the main reason the income tax evolved is the same as the reason any other tax evolved. The, the, the government needed revenue. There are many services that we, that we want from, from government that the vast bulk of, bulk of the people want from government, and that, that is what we, what we provide, and they have to be paid for. It wasn't part of our Constitution until, um, the, I believe, the Taft administration, circa 1910, 1911, thereabouts. Um, how did it um, come about? His, I mean, not just because the government wanted revenue, but there must have been popular support for something that is today considered quite unpopular. Well, when, when Truman came up with an idea and was criticized for being inconsistent, he said he was getting smarter all the time. Maybe, maybe we're getting smarter all the time, and the income tax is one way in which we demonstrate. I, I completely disagree with that. And <laughs> I so thought do you might. A whole bunch of other people. <laughs> okay, I mean, well, maybe you can tell me a little about the history of the income I'm tax. Gonna I'm, I'm going to defer to the book. Uh, there's many resources out there that you could look at. We had a number one New York Times bestseller uh, when it originally debuted in hardback. Now it's in 
in, in, in paper here, um, soft cover. Uh, you can read it. It talks about the history of the income tax, how we evolved to where or evolved, devolved to the state in which we are currently at, et cetera. So I would just ask for the brief. You can go online, uh, purchase as Bar Barnes and Nobles, et cetera. I just wanted to go to one more thing, which was the, uh, the Iowa Republican presidential candidates debate. There's a video there. Uh, that took place, I guess, I think it was August 26th, the debate? Yes, we, we showed that just now, uh, a few minutes ago. And uh, it was quite impressive. And I, I, was, um, I was still hoping to hear from you why it was that um, the um, more prominent candidates, Giuliani, McCain, uh, Romney, did not favor the uh, fair tax, whereas the uh, lesser known candidates, notably Mr. Huckabee, did. And do you think that's going to change the... Uh, the, uh, the polls at all? Well, put it this way, in the Iowa straw poll, Mike Huckabee came in second behind Romney, okay? And then in, in terms of uh, th these candidates are now understanding the importance of tax reform and specifically the fair tax, and they are uh, reaching out to fairtax.org to better understand the, the, the characteristics of our plan. I know Congressman John Linder of Georgia is reaching out to them to inform and educate them. So uh, I, I believe when we see a couple of more debates down the line, they will be more informed, more educated, and okay. hopefully we'll have a positive response in favor of. Good. Brian, we don't have much longer, but maybe you can tell me, in your opinion, do you think that this issue has legs, and do you think it will have legs during this presidential campaign? I, d I don't think so. I think whatever legs it has is, is, an, is an attack on complexity, and the complexity of the present income tax code is something that I'm against just as strongly as uh, anyone else. And I guess you didn't see I the 8,000 so. supporters down in South Carolina, and that's well, just on, there. On that We're going to see that. we've uh, pretty much got to wrap it up, but I want to thank you both, um, Brian Jones and Adam Yomtov, for coming on the show and for enlightening our viewers. And... Um, Come back and see us another time on the next edition of Hard Fire. Fire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York. Catering for the cast and crew of Hard Fire is generously provided by Da Vincenzo Restaurant, 256 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-3590, www.davincenzorestaurant.com.